and welcome to Bread of Life, a daily devotional program which each week features a different area pastor. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Joel Rissinger of Newington. Welcome to Bread of Life. Day four this week, we're talking about keeping our eyes on Jesus. Are you doing that right now? Even if you're driving down the road, keep your eyes on the road too, but (laughs) I hope you're keeping your eyes on Jesus. That's what this is about. We've been looking at how we have to join his race, we have to endure his discipline, and today we're going to talk about strengthening his church because, you see, it's a misnomer, it's a mistake to think that we can be a strong, healthy Christian and ignore or downplay or avoid the church of Jesus Christ. I mean, she's his bride. He loves her. I'm recording right now, and my lovely bride is in the studio with me. And I think of her when I th- read this or think about the church. I, I do because I remember our wedding day and how amazing it was to see her coming down the aisle. I know how overwhelmed I was. And I think, is Jesus any less so with his church, his bride that he's going to present to himself as spotless and wrinkle-free, and he's going to look at her with such joy and have a big celebration party, as Revelation describes, a a banquet, a a, a wedding supper. I mean, if he feels that way about her, shouldn't we as well be part of her and part of building her up? I think so. And we have a mutual responsibility for one another as part of the body of Christ. And that's what we're going to read about here. Hebrews 12, verses 12 through 17 today. Let me read those. It says, Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, And make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up may cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Lord, we pray that you'll help us understand how to care for one another and thus strengthen your bride, your body, the church. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a joke about the $1 bill talking to the $100 bill, and the $1 bill says, hey, man, how's it going? Where you been? The $100 bill says, oh, I've been to five-star hotels and restaurants and all around the world. It's been amazing. How about you? And the $1 bill says, well, I've been to the, you know, the Episcopal Church, the Baptist Church, uh, Presbyterian Church, you know, (laughs) because we tend to not give very generously in America, do we? And it's not about money. This Don't tune out and hang up here or whatever. <laughs> this, is, this message is not just about money. But the, the value we put on the church is often reflected, well, as Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart is. We need to strengthen the body of Christ, the church. And I think this passage challenges us with some ways to do it. Number one, we need to look for those who need support. You know, the hands that hang down, the feeble knees. It's not about just physical need there. He's talking about spiritual need. And we need to look for and care for one another. The Bible's crystal clear that we are our brother's keeper. Uh, you know, we, we are told in Matthew 18 to go to our brother if he sins. Galatians 6, 1 tells us that we're responsible for one another and to, you know, keep each other from ongoing sin and, and bitterness. Um, We need to help people walk the straight and simple path. Verse 13 here of Hebrews 12 makes that very clear. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 talks about trusting in God, not leaning on our own understanding and how he makes our paths straight. We need to be helping others and letting others help us too to continue to follow Jesus and walk the straight and narrow, as we like to say. We need to chase after peace with everyone. You know, I think of Ephesians 4 the first 16 or so verses, where Paul says in the context, make every effort to keep the unity of the body of Christ. And my question for you and me both is, what effort are we not willing to make? What effort haven't we made to maintain that unity and that peace in the body of Christ? I've seen churches break up and fight over silly things. HVAC systems, pews versus chairs, 
you know, the worship style or the type of music we listen to or don't listen to, what instruments are on the stage or not. I mean, come on, people. This is ridiculous. We need to fight and make every effort to keep unity and peace if we want that body to be built up. And that's why we're told here to pursue peace with everyone. And yes, become our brother's keeper, not in a nitpicky way, but in a way of really showing concern that we would grow. In humility, too, recognizing our own need and being willing to confess it. If we make the church a priority, she'll be blessed, we'll be blessed, and Jesus will be honored. That's the goal, isn't it? We'll see you tomorrow on By the Flag. You've been listening to Pastor Joel Rissinger of Newington, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.